Thank you, Mariam, for introducing me. So my name is Itzik Mokiel, and I'm a senior researcher in Microsoft. I will present today a technique uh, called BERT Interpretations, or PTI, which is an unsupervised method for explaining text similarities inferred by recent BERT models. So I will start with uh, some motivation and introduction, then I will uh, present the proposed method, show some results and uh, wrap up with a quick summary. Learning textual similarity is a long-standing task with various applications in information retrieval, document clustering, recommender systems and more. The goal of textual similarity is to measure the semantic similarity between two bodies of text. For example, given the sentence pairs in this slide, an accurate model should retrieve a high similarity score, although they have different or completely different wording. Recently, BERT has emerged as a powerful language model that can provide fairly good performance on various language tasks after fine tuning. In BERT, there are two training phases. The first applies training on a large corpus of text, where the training goal is to reconstruct mask tokens and the second phase fine-tune the model with supervision for a specific language task. BERT-based models are known to produce accurate text similarity scores and therefore can be used to produce text-based item recommendations. In this work we propose a method to explain the predictions made by recent text similarity models. While the proposed technique is general we chose to focus on applications in recommender systems. Recommendation systems are commonly used in online stores to offer users lists of items that are similar to the one they are looking at. Those lists are known to promote the discovery of new items and enhance user engagement. In most cases, similar items are inferred by analyzing historical purchases from similar users. However, in cold catalogs or cold items for which historical data of purchases are not available, the task of item recommendations mostly rely on content-based recommenders, which utilize item data such as text and images. So in some domains, Texts convey much more information than images. For example, in wines, detailed product descriptions and reviews are more essential than product images. Same, same thing for electronic, electronic stores and so on. Therefore, in these domains, the recommendal system can leverage text similarity model to produce lists of similar items by analyzing item descriptions. In recommendation system in online stores, the explanation of model predictions known to, to improve user engagement and trust. An explanation capability lets the user know why the model made specific recommendation. In our case, it would explain which phrases made the model think that two items are similar. State-of-the-art language models employ complex architecture comprising hundreds of millions of parameters that cannot be decomposed into interpretable components. Hence, the interpretation of those models is still an open question. In this research, we have developed a new method for explaining belt recommendations by extracting internal information from the model. Our method explains the recommendations by marking pairs of important words from both items that dictate the similarity between them. The marked pairs can either comprise similar words or different words with similar meaning. Our method. Given a seed item and a recommended item retrieved by a BERT-based model, we would like to explain why the model predicted this, that those two items are similar. Let's take a look at the following example. The seed item on the left is a blue denim with a vintage design, while the recommended item on the right describes another denim with retro design. In BTI, in our, in our technique, we start by representing the two description as two separate bodies of text. So we have the source description or the C description and the target description, which is a recommended item description. 
we tokenize the descriptions and separately propagate their tokens through BERT. The embedding of each textual elements are averaged into a single feature vector. We then propagate the two feature vectors through the cosine similarity function and calculate the derivatives of the two textual elements with respect to the cosine function. Here, we only calculate the gradients from the cosine score back to the input text without updating the model weights. From, from those gradients, we extract saliency score, which represents the, co the contribution of each word to the similarity between the two elements. Using these scores, we can highlight the keywords in each element by selecting a subset of words associated with the maximal score values. Next, and since BERT outputs an embedding for each token, we can calculate the cosine similarity between the embedding of the important words from each element. The ones that correlate to each other are paired together and this allows us to, uh, to link between the important words in each element that also dictates the similarity between, between the items and therefore explain the recommendation. So in our experiment, we train a separate the RecoBERT model for each dataset. RecoBERT is a BERT-based model that was fine-tuned for item similarity. The choice of RecoBERT stems from its ability to effectively score the similarity between two bodies of text, and since it does not require similarity labels. Given a trained model, we infer item-to-item -item similarities for each dataset by propagating all the descriptions through the model, and sorry, and for uh, by, by propagating all the description to the model. For each item, we extract a feature vector, and then given the seed, given a seed item for which we would like to calculate the recommendations, we calculate the cosine similarity between the seed and the feature vector of all other items in the data set. The candidate item that maximizes the cosine similarity is retrieved as the most similar item. Then in order to interpret the similarity between each seed and candidate item, we employ BTI on their descriptions. So let's take a look at the following example. Given a representative seed item and a match recommendation, we can visualize the gradients norm of the recommended item description calculated with respect to its cosine similarity with the seed item. The words associated with the highest norm values are considered to be the most important words in the description. So in this example, we observe that for the given sport shirt seed and its matched running shirt item, the words running, shirt, and breathable receive the highest gradient norm in the candidate description. So here we basically each word basically has a, a gradient that we calculate on, on the input uh, layer or the, 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 the input sequence, sorry, and we take the norm of this gradient and we, we plot it here on the right. Since, and so since we do not have ground roof annotations for explanation, we have conducted human evaluations and reported a mean opinion score for each method. The human judges score the explanation retrieved by BTI and other baseline cycli, techniques, along with three different ablative variants of our method. As can be seen in the table, we observe that our full method yields, yields sizable gains compared to all other alternatives. Let's take a look at a few uh, uh, samples from the fashion data set. In this example, we can see a seed gloves item and a recommendation for another uh, gloves retrieved uh, by, Re by the Recovered model. 
Our technique explains the similarity between the items by marking the words gloves of both elements, as well as the words smartphone friendly and touch screen, touch screen compatible. This is another example for a jacket seed and a recommendations of uh, recommendation of another jacket retrieved by Recobert. And here BTI highlights and matches between the word jacket from both items, as well as the word soft shell and padded, and the words water repellent and fast drying. So you can um, get some, you can get some understanding or get some impression about the complexity of the paragraph and the amount of wording uh, in it as it describes each item in these two representative samples. In summary, we introduced the BTI method for interpreting, uh, interpreting the similarity between two bodies of text. BTI strongly relies on the model intermediate representation and therefore can assess the validity of the model, of the model and can allow researchers to debug their language models by analyzing the embeddings of similar paragraph, even when similarity labels do not exist. VTI can be applied to various natural language tasks, such as explaining text-based recommendations. Uh, through our uh, human evaluations, we conclude that VTI can produce explanations that better correlate with human perception. Finally, we believe that BTI can exp expedite the research in the domain of language models by identifying failure modes in transformer-based language models and by assessing the reliability before deployment. Thank you very much. I'll be happy to take some questions. Okay, thank you for the presentation. Uh, do we have any questions from audience? Um, yes, I have a question. Uh, can you yes, hear me? So go ahead. Okay, so yes. uh, your the model will calculate the vector and you will compare the cosine similarity, right? So where will you store the vector or compute in, in real time? If you store the vector, do you have any recommendation to manage this vector? Thank you. Yeah, so it's a, it's a good question. We basically, um, in product, we, we basically do something that uh, operates in offline, but I think it can also operate in online manner uh, since the computation is not that uh, exhaustive. So if when you do that offline, you can you you, you don't really um, or you 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 basically can perform the entire thing in memory and you don't have to store the feature vector in a data set, it, but it depends on the size of the data set. So in our experiment, we used uh, two or three data sets uh, ranging from uh, 10,000 items to 100 and, and even more thousand items. Yeah, and uh, basically we were able to perform everything uh, in memory without storing the feature vectors into a data set, but there are plenty of opportunity of, of options to, to use uh, for storing feature vectors in data sets that you can find online. Okay, thank you. Okay. So I would like to ask one question. So yeah. did you, uh, what, what I'm seeing here is like usually, you know, they come like the comparison and, you know, the data that you use is usually like, basically the data about like some items. So I was wondering if your algorithm can pick up the similarities between, for example, political debates or like, you know, other domains basically, which are not like products, specifically, yeah. specifically you know, political domains. Yeah, so, we, so in particular, uh, for uh, particularly for this domain, we we, we didn't uh, uh, test uh, our method on, uh, on on politics, but we use our method in on other data sets such as MRPC and uh, and another data set from the Glue Benchmark, and the results look quite nice because the, the interesting thing is that you don't really need to have in at least in Recobert you you don't really need to have explicit similarity labels. You just need in uh, in our in our uh, recommendations uh, experiment, so we only use the catalog of items for which each item has 
uh, a title and the, and a description. So you don't really need, you don't really need to have those explicit similarity labels, and you can train a bird based model such as Lecobelt to to infer okay. item to item similarity and then get uh, get uh, explanation for that. In other domains such as politics, you you will need to have uh, um, I can think about a data set where you have like paragraphs, whole paragraphs describing some of the... Uh, uh, um, yeah, basically yeah. assume that you have like two paragraphs and you want to see how similar they are together. It's a little yeah. different from what you're doing, but in terms of like, you know, finding the points of similarities, you know. Yeah, so basically, yes, when you have two paragraphs, you only need to fine tune. We find we found that it is very important to fine tune the BERT model on the specific data set you have. So if it is politics, I would say you should take a BERT based data, a, a, a model, fine tune it on your own data set, and then apply BTI. So you can use it out of the box. Um, once you have those two, two similar paragraphs, it will be able to highlight the most important words in each paragraph. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Uh, 